Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This episode has been brought to you by Exter. And Exter was kind enough to give us some samples here to show you guys. We're going to do a little unboxing. We got the Parliament Wallet in a terracotta. Some new sexy designs. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. I want you to smell it first. Smells like pretty good leather right there. It's proper. Okay, so they got their card mechanism. That's pretty cool. Um, they also have two slots this time, so it's more like a legit wallet. Yeah, so you can have more uh, space for your other cards awesome. and whatnot. And your tracker, too. Driver's license band. ID. That's pretty cool. Uh, they also sent us over some um, brushed black aluminum. Ooh. This one is pretty damn nice. Yeah, that one's really nice. Yeah. Oh my god, the six-card holder wallet. Is it, I don't know if it's six cards, actually. I tried fitting six cards. Didn't really work, but... Five cards is enough. I really don't need more than that. Trying to hype yourself up with how many credit cards you have? Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Okay, so they also sent over the aluminum card holder oil stick. Mm. Let's see. Ooh. Now notice the notice the color on the front right here. Where? Oh, yeah. And then you'll notice with the back of that, it's got Three. some... Uh... Boom! Extra, everybody. Honestly, you will not... Regret it if you go ahead and use code 2EM especially. Save a little bit of money there. But these card holder wallets are pretty damn unique. And then I heard through the Grapevine, a.k.a. their own website, mm -hmm. that um, they're coming out with a new bag. Yeah. I think it's going to be a cross between the grid backpack and the duffel bag. Yeah. So it's going to be pretty hype. We'll that's see. pretty cool because we love both products. We do. Um, yeah. Don't forget that there are also copycats out there, and they are nowhere near this quality. Mm -mm. Trust. Go ahead and check out extra.com and use code 2AM at checkout to help us and save some damn money. Mm. And next up on the list, we have good old ButcherBox. Favorite high-quality grass-fed, grass-finished meats, wild-caught salmon, pasture-raised chicken. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Dude, is that a box full of butchered goods? It's a box full of butchered goods that you get to hopefully butcher after you cook them. Clean, yeah. Yeah. So use code 2AM podcast in all caps for that. Save $20 and get yourself a special deal with either some free salmon, chicken, or ground beef with every box free for a year. Hell yeah. Um, next up is our favorite specialty in the morning, mm. which is Rare Bird Coffee. Rare Bird Coffee is a paraxanthine coffee. Paraxanthine is just a metabolite of caffeine, meaning you don't get any of the bad withdrawals and bad effects of caffeine. You can drink it any time of the day, which is pretty cool. That's one thing I hold on to. Yes. You know, sometimes you just want that flavor rather than the effect, right? Mm -hmm. And if anything, the effect kind of helps me sleep because it's just a little bit a little bit euphoric. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've tried it at the beach house. That was pretty cool. Yeah, no. Yeah. Coffee tense. that helps you fall asleep. Who knew? <laughs> Go ahead and check them out at rarebird.coffee. Use code 2AM to save. So check this out. Um, there's, <laughs> I'm gonna show you the video, no context, and then you tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some good old fashioned husband calling. <laughs> Bro. Where did you find this? Did it just, just pop up? Dude, okay, yes. And it's been popping off everywhere. I've, I've read about it on Reddit and stuff, but I've never seen it. <laughs> and it finally came on. And I was like, what the hell? Look what it says. It says fifth place husband call. That means she's in fifth place contestant right now. What is the. So, first of all, there's a competition for this. I mean. Exactly. With a big prize. 
What's the prize? Five dollars. <laughs> Five whole <laughs> dingleberry dollars, bro. <laughs> okay. So this is a part of the Iowa State Fair. And it's just one of those, like, family events, I guess. But other than husband calling, there's a bunch of other calling competitions. Like there's what? Like mom calling, hog mom. calling. It's uh, pretty insane. When I saw it, I was like, okay, is this something that people signed up for on the weekend just to attend to? But I was wrong. I thought it was just... Like, hey, I'm going to go husband call today, you know? <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was doing this Sunday. It's like the hobby horsey. Yeah. But no, no, that's not it at all. So what it is is that at the Iowa State Fair, they do family activities, and they have contests to win five bucks. So it's kind of one of those dumb things. But lately, I think anything that's documented just seems like this was a whole thing mm-hmm. because it was just emphasis on it. But that's not that's not it. It's, it's very... Um, very Iowa. <laughs> like if I are you, are you telling me that there's a culture of people yeah. that are interested in this? Uh, from the or is this it? just for goofs? I think it's just for goofs. But I mean, I can't help but notice that everybody in that video, the demographic was probably like a certain age. Yeah. Right. Older people. And <laughs> it follows. <laughs> <laughs> Geriatrics. Oh my god, man. Like didn't old people used to play bingo? What is Oh this? yeah. What is this? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Go I mean, play bingo. That's my- <laughs> I think this is what happens when you live in a state with nothing else to do. <laughs> this is why like I don't know anything about Iowa. Yeah, I'm but, sorry, <laughs> Iowans. <laughs> but I know. I now know. Like I feel like I know a little bit something about I wonder you know? how many listeners we have in Iowa actually. Mm. I'm sure we actually do have. I think we're we're like five to seven, maybe 10 states away from covering the entire U.S. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. So thank you all. Hell yeah. Thank you. Besides that, Iowa, the only thing I can think of is like Iowa Kidda, which is like... (laughs) (laughs) Iowa (laughs) Kidda. So fried. (laughs) So fried. To all my uh, Egyptian listeners, there you go. Um, Yeah. Yeah, dude. Go visit Iowa. (laughs) Go get your, uh, your, your, what is it? Dad call? Yeah. Husband call? Husband calling, dude. Oh. Um, oh, well, there's also mom calling. I was, I was also picturing like, why isn't her wife calling? What is this sexist shit? <laughs> huh? Why, why is it we that we get called at? Well, I imagine there's a demographic of very angry and aggressive men who are yeah. domestic well, abusers who, the, the only wife calling there is is a slap to the face. I don't know, man. <laughs> I just like, come on, Deborah. All right. I waited for you in the car. You took forever to put on your makeup. Come on. I should be calling you. Okay. (laughs) But uh, like everything, it's always reversed. Sort of. (laughs) Not like everything. Don't take that. No, this is sexist of the highest order. God damn it, man. Bob! Bob! Hurry! You know what I just thought of? What? That is not too far off from... Cuckoo the bird, yeah. just 50 feet away yeah. from us. <laughs> he's, he's human calling. That's what it's it is. human calling, yeah. Yeah, you guys know our bird, Cuckoo. He's always uh, on alert. Probably well, hear him in the background every once in a while. A little white alarm there. Dude, birds are so annoying. I mean, yeah. They're, in, they're very intelligent, but yeah. so, so annoying. Dude, I'm glad you said that. Because lately I've been in the thought of, um, I need to stop generalizing. Just altogether? Birds are annoying. Okay. Some birds, Some birds are, annoying. are annoying. Yeah. Okay, what birds are not annoying? Um, the little morning birds. I don't know what the hell they're called. but <laughs> The mini cuckoos? No, no. They're, they're just... Like the finches? <whistles> yeah, those birds are... Peaceful. Pretty bro. cool, yeah. Reminds me I'm a millennial that grew up in 1994. Ooh, you 2005 know? throwback. Mm-hmm. That makes you feel melancholy and sad. Yeah. Where you had nothing to do but go on a tire swing or climb a tree. Dude, those videos are so like, yeah. I mean, I honestly want to call them devastating. It's gone forever. It's gone forever. And you sit there watching the video and you're like, you could go from laughing your ass off five minutes earlier to just being completely like, Like it hit dude. real right now. I feel you. Even um, anything, literally anything, like even a game back then, 
Well, do you do you remember much from like 2005? Yeah, I do. I I have a weird memory. I don't remember. I barely remember anything. 2005. Um, I was in a crazy car accident. So I remember everything like that year and kind of like who my friends were, what house I lived in, what city, um, how my schedule was too. Because you're a kid, you know. I was probably like 12, 13. You don't have much to do. No. Besides develop myself naturally Mm -hmm. (laughs) with uh, thinking that your friends are your friends forever. And... I had such a diverse group too. So I had a, a Mexican homie named Eduardo. Good old Eduardo. And I remember like every one of his um, siblings' birthdays or his parents or his birthday, I'd be at his house. And this kid collected like soccer cards. Mm. And he played soccer like pretty well. As far as I can remember, he's, he was young too. So it like, can't be that well. But, <laughs> um yeah, stuff like that. And I also remember like the the resonance behind it or the the essence of the yeah. the environment, the air, um, how my mom was younger. You know what I do remember? Crazy. I actually remember like very and, and some memories are like stored in the back of your psyche. Yeah. Until you start discussing these sort of things. I remember Basil Spice Rack, for those Spice. who don't know, we're gonna have him on soon again. This was this was a long time ago. But this was at his old house. And I think he had this badass go-kart, dude. It felt like you were in F1 for all intents and purposes. <laughs> and we were just, we were duking it out on that thing, dude. Like, those were the times. Yeah. But then people say, like, I say those are the times as, like, you should relish those kinds of memories. Like, view them in a good light. Mm-hmm. But ideally, I would, I would like to be an adult. I don't want to be a child. <laughs> yeah. I heard a quote, and it goes like, um, you should... You should smile at the things that happened rather than rather than be angry about the things that didn't happen. Like something like along those lines. So you're kind of more like in tune with. Yeah, you're grateful. Yeah, you're grateful and you also get to practice like in the future sense. Like be present, you know. Mm-hmm. You don't want to miss out on much. So the question on my mind is let's take that 2005 type of Vibe. Energy, ambiance, mm. like those classic videos you've all seen on Instagram where it, it yeah. runs through all of the memories, all the things that we remember as kids. What is that going to be for this generation? I don't know. It's, it's going yeah, to be a fucking to, iPad. Yeah, see, I was about to ask the question of is 2005 just the number for us? You know, is it someone else's 1973? Do you get what I mean? Oh, yeah, of, of course. Mm-hmm. Of course, because every time has its own... Yeah, and I feel like at, at an age where your brain is still developing, like, you don't think about anxiety, like, just general anxiety, right? That you get with um, a task at work or whatever. It's not, it's really non-existent when you're a kid mm-hmm. for the most part. Like, I remember anxiety was, like, like not performing to meet people's standards or whatever in terms of, like, Winning at a game or mm-hmm. uh, playing kickball, handball, that kind of stuff, you know? Like, that was, like, a, the most pressure you'd really have. Like, it was so temporary. Than, yeah. You felt it for, like, 10 seconds and yeah. you went on to the next thing. Other than your dad beating you for getting the wrong answer in math or not Ooh. understanding, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the only pressure you really you really had. God damn, that is some pressure right there. Yeah, dude. <laughs> no, Baba, no! Uh, yeah. It's 18 times 11! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we laugh now, but uh, it wasn't so laughable back then. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, it has a flavor. I a flavor? Like it has a flavor. Yeah, yeah. That time has a flavor. Like, What's the flavor? I don't know. You can't but just it say it has unique, a flavor. It has a unique flavor, dude. Like, It's a taste. It's, it's, it's obviously a feeling, but... Well, yeah, but I'm trying to think of a food in, like, 2005 that was, like, <sighs> oh, the, f- the flavor? For the day. <laughs> Dude. Or for the, j- for the time. <laughs> uh, See, this is what messes me up. I don't remember much from early childhood. Damn, really? I literally have fragments in my mind, dude. I remember scraping my knee in Jordan. I remember playing 
going to Mecca Mall. Yeah. I remember, yeah. It's scraping your knee in Jordan. That was, that was your entire Dude, to I, I remember this long ass staircase. It, it had to be at least like, it had to be at least a hundred feet high. Yeah. I mean, and I busted my knee and it was a bad cut, but, um, those kinds of memories like anchor you to that time. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. I'm, I don't know. I'm more like, I remember how things looked and hmm. stuff like that. Maybe that's why I'm the visual craftsman. Well, you are the visual craftsman, okay. But it starts with, uh, maybe that's just the way I perceive things. Like, I prioritize, I, I've noticed that, actually. I prioritize hmm. environments overall. Because I remember getting taught by my science teacher, for example. Um, we had, like, a, it's probably, like, 2001. We had, like, a, uh, a quiz or a test in, like, two days. And she would sit with me and just make sure that I knew everything because she wanted me to get 100%. Mm -hmm. And... Like, while that's happening, I'm so distracted by what everybody else is doing, you know, and what the room feels like, mm -hmm. rather than the information at hand. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody cares about the information exactly. when you're that young. So I remember two days later, I was doing the test, and she was looking at me like, come on, you know this, you gave me the right answer a couple days ago, come on, you know this, you know this, you know that. And I felt the pressure of like, and I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, I think it's like, there's something going on with, I observe too much. Well, it's or, just your nature. Yeah. Which goes to show you maybe that's why I know more about what happened. Like I have like year by year kind of memory. Well, this is why I think you have the eye, the quote unquote eye mm. for, for specific things. Um, because you've, it's, like I said, it's in your nature. Whether it's nurture as well, hmm. your dad being in his realm of work, all that. It's the final countdown. That's why I like pictures too. Yeah. Because with pictures, you're able to document everything, which That's is true. why I've been more aggressive Taurus. in terms of getting as much yeah. content, <laughs> not just pictures and videos of like good memories and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. It's pretty damn cool. Like, I, I don't know why I like pictures and video, but I do. I don't know if it's something that's been instilled or if it's something deeper, you know, mm -hmm. which is, it's always interested me but i feel content whenever i produce something that you know it's just that's it you know that's the one yeah. i don't know what the hell someone could look at that and be like okay great job could we just go eat you know um, <laughs> some people don't have the yeah. eye but to me it was like made my whole week you know it's weird um i was watching a fuji film um i guess ambassador for x weekly um, documentary. It's not, well, we can call it a documentary, but it's a little video on YouTube. Mm -hmm. There's an old school photographer and he's been using Fuji forever, right? And he was talking about the photos he did in like the 1980s, like mid 80s. And he was in Japan at an alleyway. And he said he would go there. He stayed there for a month and a half, going there every single day, waiting for the perfect moment to happen in that alleyway. He knew his composition and framing. Mm hmm. And he would go and he was like, every day there's like pretty much nothing going on. Until one day, two old ladies came wearing traditional clothing and one of them touched the other on the hand or on the arm like that. And he took that photo. And he was Damn. like, I knew that was the photo. And then, then he went home. So he didn't even know what that, that shot was going to be. No. He just waited there. For it's like a feeling. Ugh. That's crazy. That's insane. And then that family now um, have uh, given, the, like the painting has just stayed in the family. That's so so cool. then he went and visited them now at like 72 years old. And then they're like, yeah, this is the original one. We, we were gifted. We were so proud of it, you know? Wow. That's incredible. Like that's like, that's like a mark on earth. Like it's kind of like planting a flag on the moon. Like you did something yeah. that people cherish and it's kind of like it's legendary mm -hmm. in some sort of way. Well, I'm at the point now where I have like a, you know, Google Drive is a big part of yeah. our work. <laughs> our but I also, have a, <laughs> I also have a personal Google Drive where I literally set out pictures and videos by the by the year. Yeah. 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. Yeah. You should and get it's into, very helpful. You should get into uh, solid state drives, like hard drives. No, oh, and just stack them. Yeah, dude, because with the new iPhone 15, you can just plug in your phone, USB-C. Really? You can plug in a hard drive to the phone and Ooh. then just export everything onto there. And That's then, a great yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Um, I like this whole USB-C world. Yeah. Yeah. It's much faster, too. 
Yes. Thank you, Apple, for going to um, USB-C and yeah, 100%, iPhone dude. 15. <laughs> Finally. Like, none of that lightning bullshit. Bro, lightning, and it was slow as hell. Come on, dude. And I haven't even upgraded to the 15, so I'm <laughs> waiting for it. <laughs> dude, I haven't had a Mountain Valley in about a month. Same with me, dude. I went on a streak of, like, two months. No without, way. Probably without, like, any spring water. It's hard to find the red one right now. It is. It is. I don't know why. Um, Shortage. I've been hearing talks that that's going to happen with Amazon and a whole bunch of other things. It's just because of supply chains and all that. Dude, F. Oh, my God. I am so frustrated. I, I kind of like that, though, because, like, we're, we're so stuck in the consumer's game. I know. But, like, for example, let me give you an example here. There's a camera I've been wanting for the past two years that I haven't been able to get a hold of. It's the Fujifilm X100V. It's a nice pocket camera. Um, gives me kind of like stylistically what I'm going for, um, like halfway there mm-hmm. or a little bit more. So it provides a lot of value for me, right? For a long time, um, mm-hmm. Fuji like hasn't announced any other drop for uh, new stock or inventory. Okay, everyone is sold out, and this camera over COVID gained high popularity. So I started searching everywhere, eBay, OfferUp, um, Facebook Marketplace, freaking like anywhere that I can get it even used, bro, mm-hmm. for like corner just, liquor, store, liquor store. <laughs> yeah, just MSRP, just yeah. MSRP retail price. Everything was like double. I'm telling you, this camera was $1,399 before tax, so $1,399. And when I saw it on eBay, it was around $2,000. That is so ridiculous. And I'm like, what the hell? This is a used camera, by the way. And at that point, it's been two years old. Mm -hmm. So it's not like brand new. If anything, they didn't discontinue the camera. There's like no information on it, right? A year later, they say there's a chip shortage, so we're unable to, like, manufacture these cameras right now. But yeah. they're not discontinued. So during that whole time, I had, a, I had an order. I had a back order that I paid for. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I paid, like, 15 40 something with tax, and it's just been sitting there on hold. And I'm like, okay, when am I getting this camera? Like, this doesn't make any sense. Every update I got, over the course of nine months, I got, like, pretty much... I don't know, 12 updates saying that mm-hmm. this item's still on back order. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? Such All a right. pain in the Just ass. Just discontinue it so we know at least. Anyway, fast forward last week, uh, the X Summit happened in Japan and they announced the X100 V1, which is the six, mm. X106. And then I was like, dope. I'm going to pre order it. So I canceled my other order. I pre ordered this one, <laughs> I pay the money. I'm like, I'm like dope, dude. Like, I'm like one of the, I have to be one of the first, whatever. News comes out. There's over 50,000 orders just from China. Oh my God. So uh, now I'm like starting to just imagine the wait list on this thing. And You're I'm, probably number 199,000. Yeah. And I'm speculating. I'm like, dude, okay, great. Like if, if it's worldwide, there's over 50,000 orders, 100,000 orders, 200,000 orders. That's fine because there's a lot of photographers out there. Mm-hmm. But where my mind went was the scalpers and the freaking resellers. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, people who are because just they in it for the money. No, it's a fucking popular product. So what are they doing? I was like, you know what? Uh, it got released the twenty eighth, which was yesterday, or is it today? Yes, today. Today. Yeah, mm-hmm. as of midnight yesterday, because I was up. Um. Anyway, before I get to that, actually, my pre order this morning got canceled. <laughs> So I was like, what the f- So they just straight up took like, you off. Like, if I was on some sort of wait list from last week, it's been already seven days. Like, how, how many orders have accumulated since seven days? Yeah. If I was one of them. Yeah. And the email didn't provide any information as to why, anything. I gave them a call, and they were like, yeah, we, we um, got a call. With, we got several calls with this issue already. We're not sure what's going on, but you're just going to have to re-pre-order. I go to the Bruh. re-pre-order. It says out of stock. You can't even pre-order it. I'm like, oh my god, bro. Thankfully, though, when I'm B&H Photo, based in New York City, mm. they had pre-orders still open. Now, they are on back order, but you're able to, pre- to pre-order and still put your name on the list. But I'm way down on the list. So, 
So if, when do you think you're going to get this camera? <laughs> I don't know. If this follows the trend of the past one, it could be a year, bro. You'll never know. And then by that time, there's another one that's out. But you're looking for this specific camera. Yeah. No matter yeah. whether it's two years, I mean, years. the iteration of this camera doesn't come out every year. It comes out every four years, I believe. Okay. So. Well, it's a waiting game. It's kind of annoying. And I just started thinking about, like, the whole scalper shit, you know, where people mm -hmm. are just... People and they they want to gain the respect of like hustle mentality. I'm just making money out here, you know. Gary V method. <laughs> like dog man, go find another industry. Um, I hate this because there's literally there's a whole community of people complaining about the same thing. It's like the photographers going, I have not been able to get my hands on this camera. What the hell happened with this like camera world? Yeah, yeah. Because it used to be easy, you know. Even a PS5 used to be easy. You just walk into Target and be like, oh, we have like three. Okay, great, mm -hmm. get one. You know. Now you have to put limits on things, and people are just out there just flipping shit on eBay. And I checked. Right when I ha had that, I was like, you know what? It's probably the flippers, the resellers, whatever. I go on eBay, $3,000. They're already selling them, dude. That's insane. They're marking them up exorbitantly. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, because I don't know how they do it. Like, a, a minute after the X Summit, where the pre-order was, like, available, like, they're just sold out. They're probably like those crypto guys who like watch charts every single minute of the day. Or bots. Or bots. I mean, yeah, that, that theoretically that could happen. I've only seen one, one website, one camera store website that had like a, you have to hold the button for like 10 seconds to prove that you're a human. Mm. And I'm like, I don't even know if that does anything, but that's the only website I saw where they're trying to like, you know. So then maybe, is this just a US thing? I don't know. Maybe there are like I think it's everywhere. Maybe there are people who are creating like bot farms in Russia and China and different countries. I don't know. To try to get their edge on that. I don't know. But I don't know. I feel like we should uh just not buy from eBay. Like don't do it. Have them pr drive <laughs> the price down cuz that's that's insane, bro. Yeah. Something valued at freaking 1700 is now 3k. But that's There's the case a, with everything today, right? It's stupid. No, most things. Anything that has, like, influence behind, like, some crap, you know? I, this is why I hate, like, sometimes aesthetic. Yeah. I Guys, know, if you I know can't you tell me. that this, this guy is distraught right now. Like, you're you actually... <laughs> yeah, bro. Oh. Dude. Uh, I'd be annoyed, dude. If it was in the health space and it was like... Like, you can't get your hands on an aura ring? Which, by the way, was an like mine just <laughs> mine just had a battery issue. Ladies and gentlemen, this guy is distraught. <laughs> mine just had a battery issue. I emailed yeah. them. I told them, "Look, I've been pushing your product like crazy." They're like, "Okay, order number. Let's check the warranty." Boom! Within five days, I get my new ring. Yeah, so, they had uh, the, they have charger issues right now too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. There there are some companies where it's like the one product is good, the others are crap. Yeah. In terms of like your weight on them, yeah, I feel like if you provide them like the video evidence, they'll they'll send it to you because they already did to, to two people I know. Mm. Butcher Box is phenomenal, mm. by the way, with shipping. Really, like after you order within two days, two three it's, days, it's you have there. it. It's yeah. like Meat Prime, Open if it, it existed, mm. not Amazon Prime, Meat Prime. Meat Prime, yes, sir. Some good old Butch. Yeah, man, but um, I get it. Hustle something else though. Like what the hell? Yeah, is yeah, this? go hustle something else. Flip How about it. you build a skill? <laughs> it's, it's just annoying. It's just annoying. I mean, that to them, to them, that is the skill. Yeah, bro, reselling is a skill. No, come well, on. It's your come fault. On. You don't know how to order things. Are you, gonna, are you going to become the master of reselling? <sighs> Probably not. This is a temporary thing for you. How about you think more long term? Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like this whole aesthetic bullshit is, is getting too far. What do you mean by aesthetic bullshit? So there was a video that came out like... Uh, a little bit at the end of COVID where someone was like, like, this is, uh, this, this retro style camera is the only thing you need. Right. Mm. And it's all about the little fanny pack, a little sick ass strap for your camera. I'm a it's photographer. Not like he wasn't showing off like the, the, the images it was like shooting. It's not whatever. about the camera. It's about the, the aesthetic it, of the camera. Exactly. Like, like traveling with this is like dope because you look cool, you know? Like, <laughs> That's fucking weird, dude. That's so so everyone's just like attracted to the look of this camera more than the capability of this camera. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if that wasn't true, you want to see so many used ones up there. If you truly loved the camera, right, and you used it day in and day out, you wouldn't sell it. You'd hold on to it. Yeah. 
<clears throat> that's the thing. Look at my shelf, like back home. Yeah, you've got a stack shelf. It's just like the things I don't use, I sell because I was just like, okay, I played with it. It's not really my thing. Cool. But there's things that you just, you, you love, you want to keep it, you use it, you benefit out of it, right? Can you imagine buying they're, the order ring just for that. the look? A uh, sleep tracker just for the aesthetic? Many other, <laughs> many other cameras or uh, many other accessories, I guess, or rings. Yeah. You use. Damn, dude, I'm sore from talking about that. <laughs> my, my jaw and tongue are very sore. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah, I don't know. Just, um, other than that, I'm just looking forward to Abud coming on again. Oh. Yeah, dude. Peptides. Yeah, we left it at peptides, and that's where it gets interesting, because if we deep dive on peptides, man. We're going to learn a lot about that. Yeah. I've been playing around with BPC-157 for the past month or so. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal Incredible. stuff. Incredible. Phenomenal. What are the effects? I mean, so first of all, it has this amazing effect where it basically balances out your um, dopamine and serotonin system, neurotransmitters. So, you know, when you have a nicotine pouch is in, doesn't hit as hard. When you have caffeine, I mean, it depends on the person. Caffeine still works relatively well for me, but essentially you're, you're like reset. Like your mm -hmm. mind is reset from all the dopamine bullshit around us. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that big time improvements in gut health. Okay. Joint pain. Do you have joint pain? Oh, dude, the, I don't have joint pain. Of course. Come on. I'm a health coach. Yeah. But this is actually what I've noticed. Uh -huh. So I, before getting on BPC-157, I wasn't training that much. Mm -hmm. And then as, a, as an experiment, I really went hard on training after the first day after I got it. And I noticed that the next day, like I pushed myself hard, dude. Mm -hmm. The next day, no soreness. What? Nothing. No soreness. It allowed me to train the exact same way the next day. And it was only after like doing that for maybe three to four days where I started to notice a little bit of soreness. What the hell? Wait, so it, like, it's like instant um, satisfaction to the muscle. Like, instant just... recovery. It was really nice. I really enjoyed that part. If I was playing soccer still competitively and I had that stuff, oh, come on. Bro, you get, you get fired. <laughs> I would get, <laughs> um, yeah, you're doping. <laughs> yeah. So a peptide is essentially just protein. Like a, it's a... <clears throat> Well, I mean, this is something we have to talk to Abud about, yeah. but it's um, it's a variation of a protein, I think. It just comes down to the amino acid yeah. sequence, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I figured. Yeah, I mean, he told me to take it when um, I had shoulder pain, just from the injury. He's like, dude, this will, like, increase the amount of, or, like, it will reduce the amount of time it takes to recover. Yeah, although some people say with, with injuries, um, the injectable form is way better. Mm -hmm. I, I do agree with that. But then again, there's, like, this... There's this huge um, hesitation with people injecting peptides because they associate it with like SARMs and yeah. TRT and all this other stuff with like terrible side effects. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I mean, I trust my doctor. We'll see. Dr. Abud Bekri. <laughs> my doctor. I don't have any other doctor besides yeah. him. <laughs> all right. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode and you stuck around this long, that means you love us. So go ahead and rate us five stars on Spotify or off a podcast. Mm. You know where to find us. We're available online on all major streaming platforms, baby. Uh, do not forget to use code 2AM for any of our affiliate links. We'll drop them down below in the description. Uh, yeah. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>